LBC with Darren Adam. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Good morning, it's uh, Thursday morning, 4th of July, 2.33, and I'm Darren Adam with you on LBC until 4 o'clock this morning. Will Guyett's here in an hour, for it is Thursday morning, lots of tech to discuss. I suspect we will probably touch on the uh, surveillance society story that we've been discussing over the course uh, of the last 90 minutes or thereabouts. But let's turn to languages. A new report by the British Council is finding that while two-thirds of teachers surveyed by the British Council say the difficulty of language exams is causing concern. Another quarter have said that Brexit had cast something of a pall over pupils learning foreign languages, some parents discouraging their children from learning other languages. One teacher noted comments from pupils, quote, obviously heard at home, such as now we are leaving the EU, you won't need this anymore, unquote. Absolutely horrifying. But the main claim from teachers is that it's the difficulty of exams, difficult exams discouraging people in England from learning languages. According to the British Council Language Trend Survey of 2019, finding the majority of teachers were concerned about the content of language exams a year on from the introduction of new GCSEs and A-levels. Now, we'll get into that in a minute, but on, on the Brexit point briefly, much as I think and, and you can hear that being said by some people. You can imagine that being said. Oh, yeah, we're leaving leaving Europe, leaving the European Union. We don't need to bother with those continental languages anymore. Absolutely reprehensible. But you can imagine it being said. However, I think we've always been rubbish at languages in this country. We've been absolutely terrible at learning them. And I think it's I think it comes down to arrogance. I think it comes down to a weird kind of nationalist exceptionalism. I mean, as indeed does Brexit, but that's a separate argument. Um, I think when it comes to languages, there is this sense that because other countries and people in other countries generally learn the English language, then why should we have to bother learning theirs? We'll get by, it'll be fine. We can just speak in English and make ourselves understood. Make other people understand us. And, and the really irritating thing is that that sort of works. That's the really depressing thing, is that it's kind of successful and kind of likely to be successful. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more we refuse to learn other languages, the more English persists and the more English is learned by, by people in other countries. I think it's just rude, to be honest, to not at least make an effort to learn other languages. But it's also very, very short-sighted, because there's a whole bunch of reasons why learning a language is an important uh, and useful thing to do, way beyond the, the simple utility of, of, of knowing the language itself. Uh, and we've always been terrible at it in this country. We've always been rubbish at it, and it, it doesn't seem as if it's getting any better. 0345 6060 973. I think it's shameful that we're so bad at learning other languages in this country, um, whether that's because we're, we're not able to do it or we don't want to. Why is that? Why are we so absolutely and arrogantly useless at learning other languages? 0345 6060 You can text 84850, tweet at LBC, email darren at lbc.co.uk. I want to hear from you as well if you have made um, an effort, if you are multilingual or even bilingual, if you are what feels to me like the exception to the rule in this country. Sasha Stollens is a senior teaching associate in German studies at the University of Lancaster. He joins me this morning here on LBC. Sasha, good morning. Thank you uh, for your time. So the, I, I guess the bulk of this research suggesting it's the difficulty of exams which discourage people from learning languages here in the UK. Is that reasonable, do you think? Well, that's um, certainly one of the main findings of the latest British Council Languages Trend Report. And um, it is certainly one of the main perceptions of secondary teachers who deem GCSE and A-level exams to just be really unnecessarily hard, especially compared to other subjects. And they, they obviously fear that this puts off students, um, yeah, and that, they, that this means that students don't really choose languages for GCSE and A-level anymore. So I've seen a few um, A-level exams myself, and um, from a higher education perspective, I think they might actually be slightly harder than they need to be. Are the exams that children and pupils take in this country any more difficult than language exams in other countries? Mm, that's a very good question. 
I don't think that's necessarily the case, but um, you have to keep in mind that the contexts are really different. So um, in lots of other European countries, uh, learning languages is compulsory from a really early age. So I myself, I'm from Germany, and we have to learn English, and you have to study a second foreign language from an early age, and you have lots of more time, curriculum time, to actually cover broader ranges of um, of content. So I think it would be really difficult to compare British um, exams with exams in other countries, given that the background is so different. Mm. Well, I think that is the problem, isn't it, then, that in this country yeah. we are spectacularly bad at teaching languages from a young age. Now, I went to school in, in Scotland, which has a different education system, but I can confirm it was every bit as bad as uh, as the education system in England when it comes to learning languages. I don't think we, uh, on a compulsory basis, had to start learning anything until I was 13 years of age, and it was a bit of sort of perfunctory uh, French and or German. Certainly no sense of languages being important from a very young age. In other European countries, how, how young, at what age will someone start to learn languages? So... I think it's fair to say that usually um, students start in secondary school at the latest. And I think in many European countries these days, um, students start much earlier, even um, in primary school, some even in year one. So that's certainly the case for English in, in, for example, in Germany, where students really start in year one now and studying English and then pick up a second language shortly after. So students start much, much earlier than, than here. Do we have an attitude in this country which says English is a language that is spoken right around the world and therefore we don't need to bother with other languages? Is that what's at the heart of this? <laughs> yes, I think that certainly is a problem and I think that certainly is a myth. I think it's it's actually not true that everyone speaks English and mm. especially we need, to, we need to ask ourselves, is that really what we, what we want? Because learning languages is about much more than just being mm. able to speak a different language. It really broadens our horizons. It really helps us understand different cultures, um, reflect on our own national and cultural identity. And it's actually fun as well, I think. Yeah. Is that something we keep forgetting about? It's not just useful. Well, I, I certainly feel that I was failed by not having that multilingual experience at a very young age. Because, And, and maybe you can help me with this as well, Sasha. Uh, a, a phrase that's just popped unbidden into my mind is neuroplasticity, this idea that very young children uh, are, are more able to pick up different languages because their brains are still forming in a way that makes it much easier. So is, the, is there some truth in that, that a, a five-year-old child will actually find it more easy to pick up a second language than someone who's 15? Yeah, there's, there's certainly research to suggest that um, the younger you, you start, the easier it is for you. But at the same time, there's lots of research to say it's never too late to start a language. So it will be easier the younger you are, especially certain aspects of learning a language will be easier. But um, it's never too late and you can never be too old. And I think we should also keep in mind that the UK already is a multilingual country. Mm. We have lots of homes across the UK where other languages are spoken. Welsh is spoken in Wales. We've got Gaelic in, in Scotland. And lots of other languages from Polish and Arabic and Urdu that are really, really common in the UK. So I think it's also a myth that um, England and the UK are just English speaking countries. Mm. We have the potential there, we just need to value it. Well, around the world, I would imagine Mandarin and Spanish would both be in the top three in terms of the, the reach of those languages, in terms of how frequently they are spoken. Do Chinese students, those who speak Mandarin, do they have the same attitude to languages that we have in this country on the basis that their language is spoken by lots of people? No, absolutely not. And that's, um, that's the really fascinating thing. <laughs> Um, we've got lots of Chinese students who come to the UK to, to study or to do parts of their study. And um, they all speak really, really good English. So they definitely do not have this attitude, even though China is such an important um, country in the world, globally, economically. Um, and Mandarin is such a widespread language. So we can't, we don't see the, the this kind of attitude there. I think it's a very English thing, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and I imagine that, that Spanish students Similarly, despite the fact that their language is spoken so widely and increasingly so around the world, they probably also don't take the view that they don't need to bother learning other languages because they speak a language that is widely spoken. Absolutely, yes, I agree with you. So what do we do about this? Well, that is a very complex question. I think there's, there's lots of things that um, need or could be done. Um, I think um, 
you know, if we if we if we see this in the in the context of the current political climate, if we think about Brexit, I think um, it's actually really really important to recognise that we need good linguists in this country. We need people who are able to communicate successfully with our European and international partners. We need um, people who have this intercultural sensitivity. Um, so my, I think we need a uh, language policy. We need a strategy, something political that means languages are compulsory. Um, we need to work on exams. We need to make sure that the curricula are engaging and um, actually do promote this idea of learning about other cultures and not just promote languages as being a communicative tool. So I think we need work on lots of different fronts, really, curriculum, exams, and the wider political perception. And to go back to this idea that the younger someone starts learning, the better. A friend of mine is married to a woman from, from Denmark. His wife is Danish, and they have a child who is half British and half Danish. And uh, as far as I'm aware, he's about three, maybe four years old now and is, is utterly and completely bilingual. He can switch very happily between Danish and English uh, without a moment's thought. How do we get ourselves into a position where we can take advantage of, of that ease that we were discussing, that particularly young people mm -hmm. have in terms of learning languages? How do we factor that into what we should be doing going forward? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it is it is a common perception um, to, to to think that um, it's actually an additional burden, especially with bilingual children, which it really isn't. They pick it up just just as they go along. It's they, it's really really easy for them. And it can be taught in a really playful way, especially with younger children. Um, yes, I think we need to rethink the way the way we perceive languages, and we 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 need to, like I said before, multilingualism is a fact. It is a British thing, and we need to accept that, and we need to we need to value that. And at the other end of the age spectrum, I guess, you said it's never too late to learn another language. Mm -hmm. um, there are night classes, the internet now, of course, opens up all sorts of possibilities. Yeah. Um, it is never too late. What are the advantages of learning a language much later in life? So yes, it is. It is never too late, and there are different opportunities. There's different um, options. You can you can you can take evening classes. You can you can go back to university. Further education offers lots of possibilities to to study languages. And as you said, technology, the internet, lots of apps. Um, yes, I, I did say it's never too late, and I really really firmly believe that it's never too late um, because it is never too late to to start opening your mind to to other cultures and mm. to learn about other languages and. Um, and there will be challenges, um, but uh, I think it's worth it. But on that technology point, I can I can hear someone probably right now thinking, or maybe even shouting at the radio, well, what's the point? We've got Google Translate, and maybe that technology is not perfect at the moment, but in 10 years, it will be, arguably. Um, mm. Do you fear that actually technology might be the death of language learning in that it might bring us to a place where we simply don't need to learn other languages? Mm. Um I don't really fear that. I think um, I think the technology is actually a really good thing that can really help us with this process. And you're right, Google Translate works works really well already, um, but it will never be able to actually replace a human person. So I don't think it will ever be able to have this intercultural competence to know what is polite or rude in France compared to what would be considered mm -hmm. polite or rude in the in the UK. So I think this is really something. I believe we can never really teach machines to do. Mm. That's where the human aspect comes in. I struggle with Icelandic, Sasha, um, okay. which is uh, a language yeah. that I once learned because we spend a lot of time in that country. It shares a lot of grammar with German, the idea of there being four different cases, completely alien yeah. um, to anyone who has spoken and, and, and written English all of their life. It takes a long time to get your head around that. But I did, on one occasion when I was picking up a hire car, I wanted to say I have a reservation in Icelandic and I, I did a quick mm -hmm. translation of that phrase and um, it didn't really work and I asked an Icelandic friend what I got wrong when I saw him later on and he said what you actually said was I have reservations about this rather than I have a reservation <laughs> so what I was basically saying was mm, I'm not sure if I should hire yeah. a car rather than I have hired a car. Um, Sasha, thank you for your time this morning. Sasha Stolens, a senior teaching associate in German studies at the University of Lancaster. My number on LBC is 0345 6060 973. You can text 84850, tweet at LBC, email darren at lbc.co.uk. I want to hear about your experiences of learning other languages. Take me right back to when you were in school. Um, perhaps if you've got children in school just now, is it better 
our language is being taught at an earlier stage, taking advantage of, yes, that neuroplasticity that exists in the brains of younger children. It seems to me such a waste if we aren't taking advantage of that and teaching other languages as early as possible. As you heard there from Sasha, many, many great reasons to learn another language beyond the sheer utility of learning that language the joy of being able to speak in another language, the way in which you can access and understand another country's uh, culture, literature, music even. 0345 973 And why do you think we are, relatively speaking, so bad at languages in this country? Is it simply down to that attitude which suggests that because English is so widely spoken around the world and also widely learnt around the world in other countries that we we don't need to make the effort. You will be aware, of course, if you go to another country, a non-English speaking country, the vast majority of, of people in those countries, the vast majority of the time, are able to speak English and often extraordinarily embarrassingly well. 0345 6060973. Why are we so bad at learning languages in this country? Do you think it is, as this new research from the British Council uh, suggests, is it down to the difficulty of exams in school? 0345 6060973. It's LBC. Nick Ferrari at breakfast.